There's some news out of Camelback today. We should probably get into that before we dive more into uh, the Gonsolin talk. Nine players cut from uh, from camp today. You got those names? You want to run through that? Give the people a chance to hear your beautiful voice? Yeah, let's go through those names. I actually have it right here. The Dodgers have optioned Diego Cartaya. Infielders Michael good Bush. Friend. Yorbit Vivas. Eddie's Leonard, who's actually looked really good. Eddie's Leonard's looked, good. looked really good. Yeah. Outfielders Johnny DeLuca. Andy Pajes. And they've also designated, uh, and they assigned pitchers Matt Andreas and Bobby Miller. And infielder Jame Jones to minor league camp. So, yeah, I mean, there are some developments today. Some for- some names. The biggest names, obviously, you got three of the top five players on uh, on the Dodgers uh, prospect pipeline. Good friend of the show, Diego Cartai. If you guys missed it, Doug just dropped his interv- interview with Diego that he did at Camelback. So this is uh, Diego Nation. Cartai Nation? Cartai Nation yeah. works. Cartai country. <laughs> uh, you know, you didn't expect to see very much out of Jorbit Vivas or Eddie's Leonard. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie's showing out, maybe proving himself either as a trade op, you know, um, trade chip or somebody that could fill a little bit of a role uh, somewhere along the way. Not great defense, not great offense, but a serviceable player that can... Uh, you know, fill fill a need here and there. The but the other biggest name, uh, Bobby Miller, who they said last week for some reason is not going to pitch this spring. I, I think it's kind of weird it, the way Dave kind of brought it up. It seems like they just don't like where he's at mentally in his game. Is that kind of what you read out of it? Yeah, that was really my big takeaway. They just feel that he's really not in a position where you want to just throw him out there. Maybe you do some damage to his psyche. Maybe you don't think from a delivery standpoint he's where he needs to be because that's really been the key for him is trying to smooth out that delivery. It's been wonky at times. You see him struggle with runners on base pitching. And yeah, I think with Bobby Miller, they're just really slow playing because they're thinking long term and they definitely have the bubble wrap on him. But he's one of the guys that I was most excited to see this spring because I asked Dave Roberts one of our first days there about Bobby Miller and he said that he's a guy that has that plus plus stuff and that we are going to see him pitch for the Dodgers this year but yeah very interesting development to at least not give him a little taste of spring training action at this level yeah um, definitely surprising I mean he got into some games last year during the spring uh, you know pitched in Anaheim and just because he's you know cut from the roster now or reassigned optioned whatever not option reassigned because he's not on the 40 man uh just because that happened now doesn't mean you're not going to see him at any point during uh spring training still you know they can they can reassign they can cut they can option they can still come back and pitch in a major league game so hopefully they give him the opportunity to pitch once again um against the angels in the freeway series or something like that the other biggest name michael bush a guy that even before it happened we had kind of planned to talk a little bit about uh on today's show Bush, I think, is honestly the biggest name that was uh, optioned uh, at this point. Uh, he, <laughs> the worst part is, dude goes out and throws up a three for three day, and then it's hey, you're rewarded with the minor league barracks. But uh, you know, Dodgers uh, just doing what they got to do. They cut the roster down to fifty. Of course, they got to get down to forty. They got a few guys that can clear some spots with Lux eventually hitting the sixty day IL. Uh, Alex Reyes. You know, possibly you, you. I mean, I don't think you're gonna see a. Um, you're gonna see. Oh, Walker Bueller's one. You, you probably won't see that with Daniel Hudson, but they can clear some roster spots, kind of give themselves the optionality. But hey, you also got to eventually find a way to open room for at least Jason Hayward on the minor league side of things. But hey, spring training, second round of cuts. That means we're that much closer, like you said, to opening day, which uh, is a good day. Yeah, it's a great day. It's going to be a night game, which is going to be awesome. But yeah, kind of to touch on your night. point. <laughs> yeah, great night. It's going to be a great, a fantastic night, which we'll get into in a little bit. But yeah, talking about Michael Bush, it's very interesting. Like you mentioned, goes three for three, hit his first home run of the spring yesterday. There's no doubt about that this kid can absolutely rake. He can mash. Last year, he led the OKC Dodgers in home runs. And for him, it's really just about being blocked. He's blocked at certain positions, and they just don't have the opportunity yeah. for him. So he's just not a great fit right now. And to me, you look at his age, he's closer to 30 than he is to 20. He's going to be like 50 years old at OKC before he gets a shot. I mean, at some point, you kind of have to do what's right for the player. And something kind of tells me that he might be one of the guys that they will include in a potential deal if they want to work around the margins to maybe bring in a kind of or someone of that ilk. So, yeah, I definitely keep my eye on him. But, yeah, he's a great guy, athletic guy. He's a guy that I think defensively you saw them work him out in left field 
last year. So yeah. if he really had made the strides as an outfielder, I think maybe there would be a bigger yep. opportunity Definitely. for him. But yeah, just right now, it's just not a great fit with this current makeup. Yeah, like, like you said, you know, he hit 32 homers last year at AAA. Drove in 108, uh, OPS just under 900. He doesn't have very much more to prove hitting-wise at the AAA level. Um, I, I thought it was definitely odd how much they were playing him at first base. Dave was playing him at first base this spring. You would you would think he'd try to force some more positional you know versatility, but also they've gone all in on Vargas at second, even when he can't even you know fully play the game right. So I could understand him not them not wanting to put it there, but. Uh, when Lux went down, I really thought or assumed it would open more opportunity for Lux or for for Bush. But the fact that he's a second round, uh, you know, of cuts, it's definitely telling, you know. No, it's absolutely telling. And the way these Dodgers are playing it these days, I mean, hey, if you're going to send them right down, the last team, another major league, the last thing another major league team sees if they're interested in possibly acquiring him <laughs> is what he does at the plate and you're kind of getting him out there on a hot streak but I also think too the Dodgers just aren't playing games this time around they kind of know the direction they're heading in so yeah, yes you can fair. give them more opportunities against better competition but why prolong the inevitable and I think Michael Bush if you know he's going to start the season at the AAA level if you know you're going to send him down to the minors might as well just start now but yeah it's unfortunate yeah. because he definitely his hit tool is very impressive and he hits the ball very very hard and we'll see how some of these other guys fare because yeah I mean you mentioned Miguel Vargas. Look, Miguel Vargas is a guy who is going to be playing this second base position. Position. He's going to get the runway there, but can also spell Freddie at first. He can also play some third. Yeah. Muncy can spell him at first. So, yeah, unfortunately for Michael Bush, it's just kind of the wrong team, the wrong time when it comes to opportunities. And, yeah, if I were him, I mean, when I spoke <clears throat> to him in the clubhouse, I was asking him about – the is there a frustration level when you're with this Dodgers organization a team that has all this talent all these resources or is it just kind of a wait for your opportunity and do you kind of feel like just being here and taking that development is worth it he told me it's all worth it so for him let's say he goes on to another team at some point he still was developed by the Dodgers so even though maybe he never plays for the Dodgers in the show but wherever he ends up he'll still benefit from their coaching and development so yeah I wish the kid the best and I really hope he gets his opportunity sooner than later a couple other uh, little mini notes before we get into the comments here. I think the team did do their um, their uh, injured list designations today because on the Dodger website right now, Bueller's on the 60-day IL. J.P. Fireisen was another guy I didn't mention. He's on the IL 60-day uh, as well as Blake Trinan, who we know were probably not a ever see not gonna ever see again in dodger blue uh or even pitching at the big league level i don't know i just don't see him coming back from that but let's get in a few of the comments here uh there's one from anthony keen i like but i know we got ourselves a super chat so let's go to dj <laughs> producer cody real quick well, can we get some energy to the uh, other guys uh, there we go golly <laughs> Timothy Hooker, twenty dollars. He said, "Pair character dancing under a rain of confetti and taking his hat off to say you are amazing." Wow, that is something. That nice. is very descriptive. Yeah, we need that Venezuela fan energy, guys. Come on now. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Appreciate that. Oh, that's awesome. That's Appreciate touching. every super chat Appreciate you guys that. give, whether they're a billion dollars or one dollars. We love you for them all for sure. Anthony Keen in the stream. You got another one? Yes, we do. There it is. Necron 99, a.k.a. Sammy Boy, says, Luke William has played every position, I'm assuming, except uh, catcher and no errors, CT3 2.0, but at minimum salary. That's true. This is true. Thank you for the super chat. Appreciate uh, all the love in the stream, as always. $5 super chat yeah. from Necron uh, there. He's kind of uh, one of the guys I liked when they signed him, but it was weird because they picked him up. And then it sort of went where they cut him, and then he just kind of magically Brought appeared back, yeah. back with the team. But he's somebody who, the main thing I like, a lot of third base experience where beyond Max Muncy, there's not a lot of depth at 3B. You know, they did after that fact, they went out and traded for, you know, Yanni Hernandez, who's a very intriguing piece right here. But, you know, we've talked a little bit about, you know, off, off stream. Uh, uh, about you know watching Luke Williams, what do you, what do you think? You think this kid has any shot of anything 
I, I think, think opening day wise. I would opening day wise. I would say no. I think that maybe you're hamstring away from seeing guys move around, and maybe he receives some consideration. But if you look at him at the plate, he's in 174 during spring training, four for 23. Defensively, it was clear he had a strong arm, made some really nice plays. I think you can see him possibly in the infield, but I don't think the Dodgers really have a need for someone like Lou Williams right now. I mean, you're talking about sending Michael Bush down, a guy that plays some multiple infield positions. Luke Williams, I think his his hit tool, his his hit profile doesn't really project at this level yeah. at this stage. But hey, he's got a great head of hair. I will tell you that. He looked like almost show like a hair. like a '90s like Zach Morris type Saved by the Bell. I mean, he's got some <laughs> nice show hair for sure. Hey, that's the, really an important thing. Yeah, like, you you don't need to be good. You just got to have good hair up there in the show. <laughs>